Renowned 30 and beyond, Kyrians can reduce the duration of incoming stun effects by 30% by simply standing still. Necrolord Resto Shamans can aura mastery flesh craft, becoming totally immune to literally every CC in the game. Holy Paladins can reduce the duration of incoming stuns and survive against a rogue mage swap on their own. And that's just to name a few of the broken mechanics that have arisen as players have finally hit level 30 renown and beyond in Shadowlands PvP, changing the arena landscape for the entire expansion, which is crazy to think about. And got us wondering, what do you think is the most powerful covenant or soulbind ability in Shadowlands? For me, it has to be mind games. With hybrid healing being so out of control, Mind Games is the perfect solution to reliably secure kills if you can land it, and it is oh so satisfying. Alright, without further delay, let's dive into today's skill cap guide and find out which soulbind abilities you should be abusing in WoW PvP and how to play around them. Kicking things off with Kyrian and the soulbind abilities you can take at Renown 31 from Soulbind Mechanicos. There are two busted defensive soulbind abilities here that players can choose from. The first is Sparkling Drift Globe Core. If you've been hit by a random stun lately that looked weird and you weren't expecting, this is it. The way it works, if the player drops below 35% health, they will proc a dispellable AoE stun to nearby enemies. This can occur once every 45 seconds. The range of the stun as we can see is pretty big, making it very difficult for melees to avoid and something you'll want to be aware of as a caster when playing against it. This ability seems pretty broken at face value and for sure it's definitely going to have its place and take over games, but there are still some drawbacks. First, it's not going to be very useful against casters, so it's likely players will find low or no value when using it in their games. And second, it does share diminishing returns with other stuns, so it could totally ruin a team's strategy if their stun DRs are reset unexpectedly. The downside, or upside, depending on how you feel about this soulbind, is that there are a multitude of high-value soulbinds that you have to choose from. After consulting with the best players of every class and spec who run Kyrian, it's only Holy Paladins who should consider running this, as you lose too much as any other class and spec. And even then, it's still a difficult choice for Holy Paladins to want to take. Which brings us to the next soulbind we want to talk about for Kyrians, Soul Steel Clamps. Soul Steel Clamps will buff the target once they've stood still for 5 seconds, a 30% stun duration reduction. Again, this only really works well for Holy Paladins, as other healers don't play Kyrian, and you have to stand totally still to get the buff. A playstyle only really viable for Holy Paladins, as no other healers play Kyrian, and DPS classes generally need to actively move around. Jumping into a peekaboo game, we see him versus Seedu and Trill, who are both using it for his opener. The buff looks like this, and will appear after 5 seconds until they move their character. Though we see Trill using it as a Windwalker, given how many monks will literally never be able to stand still after the opener, we really don't expect to see melees actually using it on the ladder. It's worth noting that forced movement such as fear will break this, and interestingly, even subtle movement caused by things like blind and dragon's breath also break it. But sadly for playmakers, it still takes a few seconds for the buff to tick down after the character moves. So you can't just fear it off and then immediately stun a paladin, for example, as you'll need to wait for the debuff to actually tick down and fade first after the paladin starts moving. Another thing to watch out for is the tooltip does state it also reduces incapacitation effects by 30%, alongside stuns, but at the moment, it only works on stuns. It's possible Blizzard fixes this in the future, which will make the Soulbind even stronger. I just hope they fix MC bug before Holy Paladins get an indirect buff. Alright, so with Holy Paladins being the only class really benefiting from these new Soulbinds for Kyrian, here are our final thoughts. We think that Soul Steel Clamps does a better and more reliable job of keeping you safe as a Holy Paladin between the two choices here when opting into survivability with Mechanicos. But if you play Holy Paladin, keep in mind you'll usually continue running Pelagos goes if you don't think you'll be heavily targeted. These should be pretty niche choices based on matchup. And if you're wondering why we spend a bunch of time talking about this stuff if they're niche, the answer to that is they should be niche choices, but they do look very appealing at face value, and we've already seen a huge surge in players in the lower ranks opting into Sparkling Drift Globe Core especially, which simply isn't nearly as good as it sounds. Alright, diving into something we know you've already seen in Arena, the OP Fleshcraft Crowd Control Immunity Effect Shamans, Death Knights, and Resto Druids have gained access to Ultimate Form. When channeling Fleshcraft, the player becomes totally immune to all crowd control effects during the 4 second channel time, and then 4 seconds 
after that as well if you complete the channel. Now, when we say immune, we mean really immune to crowd control. There's no spaghetti code that allows for weird spell interactions that can still apply crowd control. Even things like Ring of Peace, Death Grip, etc. have absolutely no effect. This can of course be stopped with spell interruptions like Kick, and in doing so, the crafter will no longer benefit from that additional 4 second immunity as they will not have completed their channel. Fleshcraft may be green, but it is on the Shadow School, which things like Resto Shamans and Druids do not have, meaning they're free to cast anything they like even when interrupted on this. So if you choose to pummel, you will pay the price of having to watch them free cast whatever they like afterwards. While a few specs have access to this that we've previously mentioned, the standout class that classifies this ability as broken is Resto Shaman, as they easily synergize with ultimate power the most. Let us explain. You're going to crowd control a Resto Shaman, who will nearly always be the most important target to CC as they are the healer. You have to work your way through Line of Sight, Grounding, Wind Shear, Tremor Totem, and even Ghost Wolf if you're trying for Repentance. Well, now you have another ability to deny if you bait out the Grounding, Tremor, etc. On top of that, Resto Shamans can also aura mastery their fleshcraft, becoming truly immune to any control. We do have a fun macro for this if you play Shaman, which you may not be aware of, that we like to call the not today macro. Essentially, you want to press it for those moments where you're getting killed with stuns and want to trinket, but you're afraid of follow-up stuns killing you. Instead of trinket linking, you can consider trinket aura fleshcraft, making you hilariously immune to everything, and you can be sure follow-up stuns or interrupts will desperately be thrown your way, to where you can then safely heal afterwards with instants as you get away. Another thing you can do if you play Shaman or Resto Druid is complete a channel before going for crowd control versus warriors. With so many pesky reflects in the way of your cyclone or hexes, complete the channel and spam clone or hex during your 4 second immunity window. Eat the reflect, nothing will happen, and cast your hex or clone again until it lands. Before we get into the next one, I quickly wanted to point out where this guide comes from. Skill capped! It's the best place to improve at Arena if you actually want to rank up and get better. We started our mission 10 years ago in World of Warcraft to deliver the best information directly from the best players on Earth. From way back then and to this current day, we still only work with the very best players. All that's changed is our guides have gotten better, and now we have a new home on our brand new website we launched just for Shadowlands. We have hundreds of guides packaged into refined courses that will rapidly improve your skills in Arena as we simplify the very best strategies the pros are using in the evolving meta. The best part? You don't have to take our word for it. We have an improvement guarantee of at least 250 rating when actively using skill cap. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. Check us out right after this. So, the last covenant deserving a spot is Venthyr with not Nadja, the Mistblade, offering the Soulbind ability, Familiar Predicaments. What this does is reduce all snares, roots, and interrupt effects users of this Soulbind, which right now is primarily Enhancement Shamans, Warriors, and Shadow or Discipline Priests. While the snare reductions are nice for both Enhance and Warriors, it's not a huge deal. The main beneficiaries here are certainly Priests. Much more important here, of course, is how Shadow Priests are going to be far more difficult to lock down over the course of a game. As historically, one of the most vulnerable classes to completely shut down as a damage source, Shadowlands is making things easier for them with instant dots and now 25% reduced lockout effect. While this may not be immediately felt on a single lockout for either the Shadow Priest or the Interrupter, during the course of a full game, it's actually a massive deal. Here's a hyperbolic example, but just for 60 seconds of gameplay, let's say two melees are on a Shadow Priest perfectly rotating their lockouts, which last 4 seconds and never missing a kick. With interrupts being a 15 second cooldown, that's 8 lockouts during the course of a minute. Without familiar predicaments, the Shadow Priest will be locked out for more than half a minute, at 32 seconds. With this Soulbind, they'd be locked out for just 24 seconds in this extreme example. Great news for them, bad news if you're a melee cleave. Although it's worth noting that familiar predicaments does lose value in playing with a Holy Paladin, given that concentration aura and familiar predicaments do not stack. This means that if a mage counterspells you with just concentration aura up, it will be a 4.2 second lockout, whereas if you only have familiar predicaments, the lockout will be 4.5. Five seconds. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Let us know what you think of all the new soul binds and which one you're either most excited to use or least excited to play against. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.